Hey booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching my channel, Books I'm Not Reading. Um, I'm, I'm wearing my little shirt with hearts on it here. I thought I would tell you about my romance with Jason in books. Um, when I did my Q&A video in, I think it was in June, end of June, right? Um, someone wanted to know how I had met Jason. And um, I kind of told like a really abridged version of that story and they wanted more. Sophie, Sophie especially, wanted more of the story. <laughs> so I thought I would do that. I uh, will tell you more of the story and I'm gonna tell it to you in books because books have always been part of my relationship with Jason. Um, we have been married for 16 and a half years. I'm sorry if that's not your jam, if, if you don't wanna hear, like if you don't wanna hear about my relationship with Jason in terms of books. Um, I felt like booktube needed a little bit of levity. So that's kind of where where this, this video idea sprang from. So when I, I met Jason, um, at uh, the university that we attended, uh, I was working for the university uh, newspaper. I was an editor and Jason was really good friends with the person who was the editor in chief. And Jason wrote columns for the newspaper, but I still remember the first time I saw him. He walked into the newsroom. I think he probably had overalls on, maybe some flannel, plaid shirt. He looked like he had just come off the mountain. <laughs> he looked like a total lumberjack. Not at all my type at all whatsoever. And you know, like we were introduced or whatever and I didn't think anything of it because he looked, he looked like a hillbilly. <laughs> Beard and yeah. So I was just like, eh, whatever. Anyway, and then he called me uh, out of the blue and asked me out in hindsight it was a really cool first date um or would have been a really cool first date because it was a new program that the dance department and our university had started where they were like using climbing materials and they were like dancing off the side of these rocks outside of the, 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 these different rock formations that were outside of our town. It's a little bit, a little bit dangerous. Um, Jason and I did eventually, um, after we'd been married for quite a while, we did go and see a performance of it. And it was like, this is like, yeah, it was a great, it was a great idea for a first date, but I just flat out said no to, I didn't make any, I didn't pretend that I had other plans or anything like that. Um, so eventually Jason says, well, you know, could, can we be friends? You know, can we be friends? And I was like, sure, no problem. We can be friends. So we started hanging out periodically. Um, I had my own, I had my own love life and own relationships and stuff like that going on at the same time. But you know, he was just, Jason was just this guy I hung out with. I was taking a class in um, Eastern European studies. <laughs> that must have been some last minute requirement I had to fill. And our instructor gave us a list of books to read and I picked The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan, uh, Milan Kundera. I hope I'm saying that right. My apologies if I'm not. Um, and wow, I, I suspect this book is still probably out of my league, but I certainly couldn't understand at the time how it related to what we had been studying in the class. Um, and I, remember thinking, well, I'm friends with this guy who's an English major, like maybe I should talk to him about it. And in hindsight, I should have had Jason like proofread the paper and that sort of thing. But it was just funny, like um, Jason was doing this film series at the university that he was moderating and um, 
I was like, oh, I kind of want to get out of this Eastern European class, like at least once. And they were going to watch uh, Welcome to Sarajevo. They were going to watch that. And so I was like, Jason, ask my Eastern European studies teacher, like if he can like, if, if he can like introduce the film, like he'll love that. <laughs> and then I can come to your film series and get out of class. <laughs> So yeah, so it worked. It was it was a great plan that worked. For Christmas that year, Jason got me a book. Shocker, I know. Um, this is not the edition. We have to have this this special edition. But um, he got bought me Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar, and I actually read it um pretty quickly after he gave it to me. Um, so I think it was Christmas break. So I had read The Bell Jar, which, you know, doesn't necessarily like sing romance or anything, but it's a great book. And um, over Christmas break, Jason sent me, oh my God, he sent me so many letters. Like we just wrote letters constantly back and forth. Email did exist at the time as of course the telephone, which we did talk on the telephone, maybe a little bit, but mainly it was letters. I get these letters with these, on these yellow legal size sheets of paper and Jason's beautiful handwriting and they were the most beautiful, incredible letters I had ever, that anyone had ever sent me. Of course, I don't have them anymore. A great regret of my life, but, I still remember the experience of reading those letters. And um, so I went back, I, I, I left left home, went back to the university, um, you know, winter break was over. And I, I think I went back maybe a couple days before classes started. And I just remember like, I mean, those letters just completely swept me off my feet. I was so shocked by them. And I remember driving in my car, going over to Jason's place and saying, in at like going, oh my God, like I'm gonna kiss Jason. I remember this. I, I even remember my precious gray Oldmobile Omega, the end of the world car, as we called it. Um, yeah, so I'm driving over there. I'm just like, okay, 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 you know. I get to see Jason. We, you know, find some privacy in his apartment that he shared with his brother and his cousin. And uh, Jason just like moved in such a way or I moved in such a way from, from Jason and I caught a whiff of him. And it was like, like he hadn't bathed the entire Christmas break, okay? <laughs> like he smelled so rank. It was just, I, I literally, I remember covering up my face <laughs> so bad. And I was like, no, no, this is a sign. <laughs> this is a sign. We are not meant to be together. And uh, yeah, so I, I was just I was like, no, that's it. Uh, and that was my senior year of college. I remember... Jason just being flabbergasted at me dating these other guys. Like he just couldn't understand like why I wasn't just, you know, falling into his arms or whatever. Um, anyway, so I had a graduation party. <laughs> Jason gave me, so this is one of the few books that we own two copies of. This was Jason's copy, which is actually signed by Gary Snyder. And Jason bought me a copy. And I just want to, just to give you like a glimpse of the kinds of things that Jason would write to me. Oh, and he called me Kells for a while. That was very strange. <laughs> anyway, but he said, Kells, remember something for me. No matter the places you visit, the countries, the vistas, none can ever be more beautiful than the landscapes within you within each of us, for we contain the earth. Love, Jason. Oh my 
God, like it's just so good still. I'm like, <gasps> anyway, so we had to keep both of these. Um, but, but that's, that's what Jason got me as, uh, for my college graduation. Um, shortly after I graduated from college, I, well, actually within days of graduating, um, graduating from college, I went to work and, um, shortly thereafter, I took a trip to Scandinavia with my grandmother and my mother and Jason came to see my, um, apartment, which was in a different city and, uh, his family lived in that city, but I had never lived there. And um, anyway, so I told Jason where we were going and he was like, well, you have to read Smell a Sense of Snow by Peter Hogue. Um, this is a Danish novel and um, we, we went to Denmark. Um, and so I checked, again, this was Jason's copy. I checked out a copy from the library. So I remember my mother was absolutely horrified um, on the plane to realize I was reading a library book on an international trip. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I love this book. It's so good. If you're looking for a good, like, thriller, I mean, Smilla is just, oh, she is a fantastic character. Fantastic character. And then after that, so Jason was finishing up his degree. Um, and I, like I said, I was living in the same town as his family. And we would just run into each other. I think we always ran into each other at Barnes & Noble. I'm not sure not sure why but I remember once uh looking at this particular book A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith which is one of my favorite books I've talked a lot about on this channel and Jason was like Jason hadn't read it but he was like you should read that and I remember being like yeah I will I, I will buy I will buy this book and I will read it um and I absolutely loved it look we have a cat oh my goodness hello <laughs> yeah are you the other love of Jason's life yeah on one of those trips to Barnes and Noble I needed by Jason a graduation gift and of course I ran into him and so I said all right like what do you want what would you like for your as a graduation gift and he picked out this beautiful edition of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy Jason has still not read this book, <laughs> but I have, I have read it. Um, anyway, it was a little, a little meta reading, reading it after we were married and, um, knowing that I had bought it for him, uh, for his graduation. So, so yeah. Um, anyway, so Anna Karenina, Jason still hasn't read it. Then... We move on to kind of a different chapter in my life. I took a year um, to live in Chicago. I lived in a Puerto Rican, primarily Puerto Rican, um, Mexican neighborhood with a small population of Ukrainians. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, it was a really life-changing experience for me. Halfway through, that year that I was in Chicago. Oh, Blue, what are you doing? Halfway through our time in Chicago, um, I heard from Jason and he said, I'm starting a book club. Would you like to be part of that? So I said, sure, why not? I'm like, what the heck? I'll, <laughs> I'll be part of the book club. I had no idea what kind of books they were gonna be reading because everybody, we rotated around who picked. Um, but while I was living in Chicago, the book club started, and this was the first book that we read in the book club, Microsurfs by Douglas Copeland. This is a really fascinating um, book, and I think Douglas Copeland is a really interesting author. I haven't liked everything by him that I've read. Um, I've also read um, Generation X, and I feel like there's another one. can't remember. But anyway, Microsurfs was the first book, though, that we read in the book club. And we would all get on email and like share our thoughts with each other and stuff like that. I think I was third up to pick a book for the book club to read. So we read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> um, and all the men fell in love with one of the characters. All the men in the book club did. And uh, it was great. It was great. 
so we kind of had Jason and I kind of then our relationship was a bit about about the book club um and it was a chance for us to really to talk more in depth about books and I have more a few more book club books to show you here but Jason realized that four of the members of the book club because you know we were initially we were scattered all over the place but including him um after I after I came back from Chicago I moved back to the same place Jason's hometown and uh um I uh yeah Jason decided we should have themed dinners because there was four of us so we couldn't have everyone in the book club come to dinner, but we would have themed dinners. And the first book, and I can't believe I don't own this book, but um, the first book that we read that we actually had a dinner for was The House of the Spirits by Isabella Allende. And so I don't have that book um, here to show you, but it was also kind of a, a, it was also a little bit of a Christmas gather. I mean, like, I don't think we intended to exchange gifts, but we, we did end up exchanging gifts. Um, and this is the book that I got that night. I think Jason already had a copy of it. Um, so, but, uh, and this may be Jason's copy and not mine, but this is Landscape Painted with Tea by Milord Pavic. And I still haven't read this, <laughs> but, it's very important for me that we have this book because this was the night that I fell in love with Jason. So you have to understand like all this time, these years are passing by and Jason would periodically call me and he'd propose. The greatest example is when he came over one time and I was just grunged out. We were gonna watch a movie together. And uh, he was just like, you know, I've been thinking about my life. I've been thinking about what I want. And I, I think we, you know, I think we should get married basically. And in my mind, I know this isn't how Jason saw it, but in my mind, it was like, he had this imaginary wedding in his head and he needed to stick somebody's face on the bride and he just happened to be coming to see me. So, so I, <laughs> but I didn't take any of it seriously because there was never a ring. There was never, um, yeah, there was, there was never anything like that. Um, there were never, never flowers, nothing, you know, it's just not like, no, never even I love you. Um, so it was really, it was really strange. So, and I, and I feel bad in hindsight, like, cause I laughed, I laughed at some of those proposals. And, um, so the night that I fell in love with Jason, I was trying to like get his attention, <laughs> trying to, and I'm telling you guys, like, believe me, nobody was more surprised by this feeling that came over me than me. But, uh, so I was trying to get Jason's attention. I was trying to like figure out a way. Anyway, I couldn't make it happen that night, but I sent, I sent a carefully worded email and, and that sort of set things in motion. And, and eventually we, yeah, we were together and it was a really weird thing because once we were together, I just, yeah, I, I just kind of knew that we were, that this was it. Like we were gonna, we were gonna get married and we were gonna you know, of course, of course I planned our entire lives, which is, has, has nothing to do with reality whatsoever. But a couple other books that I wanted to share that were significant. Um, so the book club, of course, a lot of people from the book club came to the wedding, traveled across the world, across the globe to come to our wedding. And the members of the book club were required not only to come to the wedding, but to bring their copy of the current book club book. So we have a photo of us. Um, there was four of us there at the wedding, um, Jason and I obviously, and then two other, two other people. And so, yeah, we all had our different editions of Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Jason absolutely loves this book. I find it so sad. I find the movie 
maybe maybe even more depressing it's extremely well written um uh and he is just an incredible writer but anyway so it's very strange i forgot a ton of things on the day of our wedding but we did not forget to get a photo of the book club um yeah reading this and then we went on our honeymoon and this is the book that I was reading on our honeymoon, Arthur and George by Julian Barnes. Again, it was a book club book. Um, not the kind of thing I would have normally picked up. If you love Sherlock Holmes and you're obsessed with Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle, I would really recommend this. Um, like it wasn't the greatest read for me, but again, it's still like, sentimentally I have some attachments to it I guess maybe maybe that's the best way um yeah so this is what I I read on our honeymoon and then shortly after we got we got married um Jason and I read Wallace Stegner's Angle of Repose which is I think one of the greatest books about marriage as well as the west um that has ever been written. And it's a Pulitzer Prize winner too. So I remember growing up, my mother told me to marry my best friend and that's what I did. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I did. Um, so yeah, I threw a lot of books at you. If, you. if you've read any of these, if you have any thoughts about these, like I'd love to hear about it. Or if you wanna tell me your love story in the comment section, and that sounds fantastic. Um, maybe there's a book that's significant between you and your partner. Um, I would love, I would love to know, love those kinds of stories. And again, I, I just hope this brought like maybe a little smile, um, some, some levity to booktube. Um, and, uh, yeah, I look forward to, I look forward to your comments. Um, booktube, remember to be kind to yourself be kind to others and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.